Input. How can I achieve photographic memory? Photographic memory, also known as eidetic memory, is the ability to recall images, sounds, and other sensory information in vivid detail and with great accuracy. Many people believe that photographic memory is a rare and innate ability, only possessed by a select few individuals. However, recent research suggests that it is possible to develop photographic memory through specific training and techniques. In this essay, I will explore the various methods that can be used to give yourself photographic memory and argue that with dedication and effort, anyone can achieve this remarkable ability. Before delving into the methods for developing photographic memory, it is important to understand the different types of memory that exist. Memory can be divided into three main categories, sensory memory, short-term memory, and long-term memory. Sensory memory is the initial stage of memory where information is briefly stored in the sensory organs, such as the eyes and ears. Short-term memory is the next stage, where information is held for a brief period of time, usually a few seconds to a minute. Long-term memory is the final stage, where information is stored for an extended period of time, often for years or even a lifetime. Photographic memory refers to the ability to store and recall information in long-term memory with exceptional accuracy and detail. One of the most effective methods for developing photographic memory is through the use of mnemonics. Mnemonics are memory aids that help to associate new information with existing knowledge, making it easier to recall. For example, the mnemonic homes can be used to remember the names of the Great Lakes, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, Superior. By using mnemonics, individuals can train their brains to remember information in a more organized and structured way, making it easier to recall later on. Another effective method for developing photographic memory is through the use of visualization techniques. Visualization is the process of creating mental images of information, and it is a powerful tool for memorization. By visualizing information in a creative and vivid way, individuals can associate new information with existing knowledge, making it easier to recall later on. For example, imagine a large clock with the numbers of the Great Lakes written on the clock face. The clock hands point to Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior, representing the names of the Great Lakes. By visualizing this image, individuals can easily remember the names of the Great Lakes. Another method for developing photographic memory is through the use of repetition. Repetition is the process of repeatedly exposing oneself to new information, and it is a powerful tool for memorization. By repeating new information multiple times, individuals can train their brains to remember it more effectively. For example, if an individual wants to remember the names of the Great Lakes, they can repeat the names multiple times throughout the day until they are able to recall them with ease. Finally, one of the most effective methods for developing photographic memory is through the use of spaced repetition. Spaced repetition is the process of repeatedly exposing oneself to new information, but with increasingly longer intervals between repetitions. By using spaced repetition, individuals can train their brains to remember new information more effectively and for longer periods of time. For example, an individual can repeat the names of the Great Lakes once a day for a week, then once every two days for a week, and so on, until they are able to recall the names with ease even after several weeks. One of the main downsides of having a photographic memory is the overwhelming amount of information that can be stored in one's mind. With a photographic memory, an individual can recall a vast amount of information, which can lead to information overload and cognitive overload. This can result in an inability to focus on important information and can also lead to mental fatigue and burnout. Another downside of having a photographic memory is the difficulty in distinguishing between important and unimportant information. With a photographic memory, an individual can recall a vast amount of information, but not all of it may be relevant or useful. This can lead to a cluttered mind and can make it difficult to recall the information that is truly important. Additionally, having a photographic memory can also lead to privacy concerns. With a photographic memory, an individual can recall a vast amount of personal information, which can be easily shared or stolen. This can result in personal information being shared without consent and can also lead to identity theft and other forms of fraud. Moreover, having a photographic memory can also lead to social isolation. With a photographic memory, an individual may find it difficult to engage in social interactions and may also find it difficult to understand the perspectives of others. 
This can lead to an inability to empathize with others and can also lead to lack of social support. Finally, having a photographic memory can also lead to an over-reliance on memory. With a photographic memory, an individual may become too reliant on their ability to recall information and may not develop other important cognitive skills, such as problem solving and critical thinking. This can lead to a lack of creativity and can also lead to a lack of independence. In conclusion, whether having a photographic memory is beneficial or detrimental is a complex issue. On one hand, it allows an individual to store and recall a vast amount of information with ease, which can be an asset in many fields. On the other hand, it also comes with its downsides, such as information overload, difficulty in distinguishing between important and unimportant information, privacy concerns, social isolation, and an over-reliance on memory. It is important to consider the pros and cons before striving to develop photographic memory. It is also important to balance the ability with other cognitive skills and to also consider privacy and social implications that may come with it. As we have seen, developing photographic memory is possible with the use of mnemonics, visualization techniques, repetition, and spaced repetition. However, it is also important to consider the potential downsides and limitations of having such an ability. Therefore, it is worth thinking about what are the best ways to use photographic memory if you achieve it and in what ways you can also improve other cognitive skills and consider the implications in our social and personal life.